But this book is not a mystery. This book is revealed to those who want it to be revealed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, the Bible says. So this is not a mystery anymore. I show you a mystery, the Apostle Paul said. Now, it may sound just a little bit like I'm talking about death. But let me assure you today, I'm talking about life. There's life and life more abundantly. Death will come, but I want you to live. I want you to live your life to the fullest. I want you to know today that every single one of you in this room today, you have the breath of life within you. You walked in here, you will walk out. And I want to give you the benefit of the doubt that you will live in the spiritual thing. You are not dead spiritually, but you are alive spiritually. I'm talking about life today. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, the Apostle Paul, you know, they all talked about life. The Apostle Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Now, he might, people think about being crucified, you might be thinking about death. No, he said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I live, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. He was talking about life. That's what the Apostle Paul was talking about. Life. The life that he lived at that present time. Hallelujah. And Jesus simply said, I give you life, and I give you life more abundantly. Man. Not just life, but life more abundantly. Man. See, people think that you know, living life in the fast thing, living the good life and all this. No, that's not what it's about. You haven't lived life. You might have experienced this and experienced that and all the pleasures of this world and you think that you've lived it and you've seen it all. You might have seen a lot, but you ain't seen nothing until you've seen the goodness of Jesus. You ain't seen that you ain't lived until you live for Jesus, until Jesus has got a hold of your heart. Nothing else is going to matter. That's all going to perish. The things that Jesus can give you, they will last forever. We're talking about life today and life more abundantly. Do you have hope? Yeah. Are you hopeful today? Yeah. Are you prepared today? Are you living your life as if Jesus would come today? Yeah. Or are we living our life as if he's going to come way in the future? When I'm 45 years old, that's so far away from some. When I was 18 years old, yeah, I thought it was a million years away. When I was 14 years old, I thought it was a trillion years away. But even at that precious young age, young men were losing their lives. They didn't get to see their next birthday. We take for granted. I'm sure you know somebody that it comes unexpected. So we got to be prepared. You have to have this hope. You need to prepare your life as if it may be our last life. You know, I might not always be the most excited or interesting preacher, but I want this to be the, if this is my last message, then I want it to touch your heart. I want this message to be the one that will last and stick into your heart. Praise the Lord. The Israel. Israel, they were, they were 400 years of bondage, and, and they traveled, finally after deliverance, they traveled, they went through the wilderness. And the Bible says that a cloud would come and, and overshadow them and, and the cloud would stop and that would be the place that they would abide and they would set up their tents. And that's where they would dwell for a short time. The scripture tells us whether it was a day or a week or a year, it didn't matter. But wherever that cloud stopped, that's where they stood. But I will assure you, Israel knew that that wasn't their permanent home. Israel had a greater promise. The Israel was looking to the Canaan land. That's where they were going. That's where they were headed. That's where they looked to. That's where their promise was. I'll assure you today, everything that we're doing, we us being here right now may just be a pit stop. We spent 10 years over there in southwest Denver, and, and I didn't know exactly what it was. When, I, when we opened those doors for the first time on, the, what was it, April the 18th, 1999, I didn't know what the Lord had in store. 
door. I didn't expect to be there for 10 years, but that's where we were at for 10 years. And then one day, God closed those doors, and we're here now. I don't know how long we're going to be here, but God knows. God knows what he's going to do. And that little building that we were at there, uh, we, you know, didn't quite fill it up, but even nevertheless, this group here alone made it feel kind of full. Amen. And so it looks like we have a lot of work to do. Amen. You just look around at the whole section here. Most of this section here, you know, half of this section here. So we have a job to do, church. Yeah. And it's not about me or, or any of us here. It's about soul. It's about getting people prepared. It's about getting people ready to be Jesus. It's about giving them the hope and the promise that you have of being Canaan land. But making it and crossing over into heaven. That's the promise that we have. That's the work that we have. So just as Israel journeyed, and that cloud would come and lift up, and it would be time for them to move on to a new destination, the Lord may call us, and He may say, you know what? It's time to move on. Don't get too comfortable, church, in this world. This world is going to perish. Don't get too comfortable in this world. We sit there and, and we remodel our homes and we go out and we buy new cars and, and, and that's great. But don't get too comfortable, world, or church. This world is not our home. Right uh, God instructed Israel, it's time for this cloud to move on. And he's going to instruct his church. And he said, and as long as God said, he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And until God lifts his spirit from this world, this church will prevail. Yeah. Right. Don't get too comfortable. Amen. This is not our home. This is not our home. Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus Christ is not dead. Let not your heart be troubled. See, there's a lot of troubled hearts. There's a lot of individuals who are living life with anxiety and stress and pressure and all of these things. And, and I think they got some new terminology today. I think uh, uh, for a while they were calling it ADD and all this. And, and I think it's, uh, um, what's the new word that's out nowadays? Um, someone can help me. This is a new term that people, they have these issues. Uh, someone, quick thing, uh, help me out here. I, I, I don't know what it is, but you just use your brains a little bit. It's a new term. People are having a lot of issues and they're having some troubles mentally. What is it? Everybody? Bipolar. Thank you very much. I don't know much about bipolar, but that seems to be a new term nowadays. I assure you, Jesus can take care of bipolar. Jesus can take care of high anxiety. Jesus can take care of stress. He can take care of ADD. And whatever else it is, Jesus can take care of it all. Praise the Lord. 